everyone, Stu here from Touch Leaps, back with another uh, tutorial video. This time we're going to be breaking down the demo for our recent pack, Refractions, which I put together, uh, listening to a lot of uh, Fred again, and more specifically that mind-blowing uh, boiler room set that I'm sure everyone has seen by now. found it super inspiring. Like always, I didn't set out to kind of make a one-to-one -one recreation of this sound, but more a bunch of drops and beats that um, were inspired by that set and his music. So um, if you're looking for exactly how to get his sounds, that's not here. But if you're looking for different inspirational ideas in that same world, then this is the video for you. So... Here's the session. It's pretty big. Um, it's quite CPU heavy, which is why stuff is frozen. I'll just juggle that throughout. Um, I should say up top, in previous videos, I've worked quite hard to keep everything just in the box within Ableton to show you how you can do that just using Ableton Suite um, sounds. Because this is the demo for a pack that I made for release, it's gonna contain lots of synths and plugins and things that don't just come bundled with Ableton. Um, Things like the Altoria collection is used pretty extensively throughout this. Ozone, all the isotype Ozone mastering stuff, uh, Pro L2. I mean, this is the master output here, so we probably won't go into that much, but you should know that. Obviously, all the sounds and samples and things are all made from scratch. Because this is the demo, some loops are going to be um, just audio that I already made in the pack and then imported for this demo, so there's going to be a bit of that. But... Um, I'll flag each plugin and a link to where you can get them um, as we go through. And I should probably say as well, I haven't really mentioned this before, um, we're not sponsored in any way by any of these companies. Um, this is just, as a creative, as a composer, the toolkit I have when making content for packs or library music or any of my own music. So um, anyway, enough waffle. <laughs> break down the beat first so uh it's all going through decapitator which is giving it that um crunch that saturated crunch drives all the way down though so it really is just uh touching the, the effects tone is flat no low or high cuts or anything pretty simple uh and then we just have a load of different clap and tap sounds uh, let's see, kind of a roomy clap, Valhalla room, low dry clap, um, a percussion loop from the pack, I've kept all the low end in that for a bit of weight, dry stick, stick tap. Hi hat. Sorry, let me just have a look at the MIDI as well while we're here. Just a cool sort of offbeat pattern. Uh, open hat. Just on the offbeat. All the low ends rolled out, and again, same room, room sound. Kick. 909 kick. Nice. Uh, short decay so it doesn't um decay you know ring out too long like that so it's actually the release and a little bit of a bump around 167 for a bit more punch some saturation with ableton saturator uh, it looks like i tried drum bus but decided that was a bit too much And then um, 
this symbol from uh, Ableton's collection that is run through uh, Shimmer. And also being sent to the uh, vintage verb on the send. And then we build on top of that with Monarch. square preset which is the top one automating the resonance and the pattern is following the kick then on top of that we have another bass line From the TRK01, much more of an acid, acid bass line. And there we have the, uh, the resonance and the filter automated. So uh, lots of character and movement. There's another snare here, an Ableton snare. It's kind of more like a less of a snare, more of kind of a noisy effect sound, but that's from the harmonic submenu. And it was science too. It's got a slight note to it as well, which is cool. Uh, then down to granulator. Doing some really weird stuff. So this looks like it's a pass in Serum. So I would have played a melody in Serum, imported it into Granulator 2. And then I'm really just, the file position is just scrubbing through the, the recording and stopping here, which is why it doesn't go all the way to the top. Um, bit of spray to add some randomization, a sort of medium grain amount. And um, it starts an octave higher. So if I were to pull the spray down, that's more like the original recording. A vocal loop, filtered, bit of auto pan, then also another auto pan, but with the phase all the way to zero. So instead of uh, moving left and right, it's just cutting the signal on and off. Uh, 16th notes and that's also being sent to the reverb on the granulator as well sorry there's that same trick here phase so as you you know you load it up as standard this is what it looks like and it's gonna pan the sound left and right but if you pull the phase down to zero it's just gonna pulse the signal um, in and out like that I mean, you could do that with um, any LFO, but um, I find Autopan is just a really quick um, way of doing it. Ableton loads it fast, stuff like that. Analog Lab, which I think is just a big sort of build up. Uh, yep, and that's using the Bonaventure preset within the Mini. Um, automating the brightness and the timbre down. Slowly filtering. Very cool. So that's the first section. Let's go straight into the next one.
So serum. That's where the main bass sounds coming from. Uh, this section is just the same thing again, but with an EQ and uh, making it mono as well. So when the drop comes in, we get all the low end, but we also get width up here. Acid preset. Detuned a little sub with a saw wave. A bit of noise from a micro corg noise preset. Push that up. Just a bit of thickness, really. And then a filter. And then four octaves above, we've got a saw wave that um, fades in. You see the automation here. No effects. That's it. Mono, no legato. I mean, there you go. You can pause the video in. Look at the presets there. FM8 on top. Playing what sounds like a tom sound. Yep, 808 tom. I, uh, I don't think I edited any of the uh, preset settings. So that's just playing a, a rhythm over the top. And the pulse is coming from LFO tool. Yeah. Beep. It's got this uh, clack sound, which I've EQ'd a little. Nothing else. Uh, acid kick, one of Ableton's kicks, rolled a bit of the noise off. Um, nothing else happening there. Rim sound, bit of texture again, a little bit of EQ. Uh, a loop from the pack. That I've EQ'd further. And an offbeat hi hat. All together. Real thumper. Blank form synth from uh, Spitfire. Just automating the uh, the, the 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 mod wheel you know, on this synth uh, moves through different um, synth sounds. It's incredible. So highly recommend that. Sending that to the reverb and then my voice processed from the pack and I haven't really done anything to it. I think if I were to come back I'd probably roll that off, clean it up a little. There you go, second section, pretty straightforward. Nice dry, I don't know why it's called box. Nice dry clap sound, pitched up, it was originally like this. That was too low, so up to 18. Take all that low end noise out, and that's it. I don't think it's been sent anywhere. Oh, a little bit of reverb. Then we have our beat. Kind of, um, odd kick drum sound but I liked the way it cut through because when stacked on top of the uh, bass it was it was getting lost before because they're hitting at the same time um, so I kind of wanted it to uh, cut through a little more I use DS kick for that which comes with Ableton because um, you can you can tune it so it's tuned to D0 uh, you can push the drive, give it a, a louder click, and also you have really great control over the decay. 
and this overdrive gives it that little bit of texture. That's if you really push it. So it's great. And with the envelope, you can really give it that sort of pitch, punch. So yeah, odd sounding on its own, but then the mix does the job. Uh, some tap, tap sounds from the pack. Uh, 808 core kit, Ableton's one. Just doing kind of a disco rhythm. Pretty straightforward, uh, nothing on that. It, it comes out of the box pretty, pretty great. So Reactor, our bass line, which looks like this. the MIDI. It's again the, the TRK Mojo preset which it looks like I've tweaked slightly. Probably the cutoff resonance. Yeah, added in the sub. Shaped the uh, amp envelope a little. It's great, great, great synth. Uh, this is the same thing again, but a few octaves higher. And then we have uh, one of my friends. All, a lot of the vocal samples in this, or well, all the vocal samples of this are either myself or a friend who came around for a recording session for something else. And I always find that that's the best way of getting like house techno samples is just chopping up recordings for other projects. Um, I also quite like working with audio a lot of the time with vocal chops and things. I like to be able to see the shape of the um, the waveform more than if it were MIDI. So let's have a listen to that. Uh, taking off some of the low end. Auto pan, which is kind of acting like a gate here. And uh, some chorus. And then finally, Analog Lab. So it's the uh, Prophet 5. Lo-fi keys uh, behind memories. No tweaks to that preset, so if you want to have a look at that. And, uh, and th this is my uh, standard loadout chain as well, auto pan, utility, compressor. So uh, you'll see it a lot, but they're not doing anything. bridge section. This is an Ableton instrument. No uh, changes to it. Just playing a simple three note melody and then a vocal sample which is still frozen. Let's unfreeze that. So that's it. That's standard. And then we're using Lifeline Expanse to give it that kind of texture and breath. Lifeline Expanse is really great. It's by Excite Audio and it's it's really similar to um, RC20. There are two versions. There's Lifeline Expanse and Lifeline Console that do slightly different things but I'm using it here to add dirt width, a bit of space, some form and stuff. Te texture. Really, really useful. Really cool. Uh, especially if you want something like a vocal to cut through a mix. Yeah, same 808 percussion as before, just carrying that over to the next section again for cohesion. Uh, then the beat. 
So firstly, a kind of textured, clicky percussion thing from the pack. And then our first instance of Big Kick, which is a Plugin Boutique's sort of kick synth. It mixes samples with uh, this sort of synthesizer. Really powerful, allows you to, kind of like DS Kick, allows you to pitch, pitch around really accurately, work with the decay and hold and all that stuff um, to the millisecond, which can be really useful. And then I've just rolled the top off. because um, it was a bit too noisy. And then Ableton's 909 kit. Playing a rim shot into the MIDI. And the kind of live feel of it comes from uh, random pan being automated. So these are straight down the middle and then when this flurry happens, it randomly pans left and right which uh, is great. I've also turned it down a little there because it was getting too loud. Um, nothing happening here. And then at the end, the stereo widening uh, tool from within Ableton, which acts like a Haas effect. This is effectively a millisecond delay. You can create flaming, which is really useful. So I'm just using a little bit there. Um, to give the mix a bit of width. Again, helps it cut through all the synths and all the noise. Bit of ear candy. Uh, bass. Cool. So this is um, bass. It's a Max for Live bass synth. Um, just playing a D, bit of auto filter, uh, sine wave, saw wave, triangle, uh, feel free to pause and look at the settings there. The rhythm is coming from the auto filter. So it's cutting at about 1K and then the rate is automated here so that we get, for example, eighth notes here and then sixteenths here. seconds and we just move between them quite a neat little trick add a bit of rhythm in uh, and then we're using the transient shaper from neutron which is part of the ozone 10 or isotope collection uh, I'm boosting the attack and pulling the sustain down helping it cut through I'll turn it off kind of mushy and just helps uh, clean it up give it a bit more presence that's being stacked with wavetable doing the same thing same auto filter preset so we get exactly the same rhythm and um, the noise manipulator preset from the complex uh, drop down menu and then they're both being, they've grouped, I've grouped them together and they're both being processed with this chain. So there's uh, a compressor, just keeping it out of the way of the kick. Um, just at the end there, cutting all the low, low end. Uh, Saturn 2, giving, giving it some texture. But I've created a, uh, a crossover. So the low end is unaffected, but the higher frequencies have got this drive and tone shaping. The most interesting thing is probably this tape malfunction plugin, which again, part of Ableton's uh, suite of plugins, and it just creates sort of like a tape drift um, effect, which is just so cool. You can change the pitch, but also, you know, kind of like a tape skip. A slightly odd rhythm like this. Really great. Works really well on drums as well. That 
And then finally the Juno 6 from the Autorio collection. Sort of doing this horn, horn sound. And then slowly automating the, the bend. But this is the preset. Jun dubstep, if you want that one. And uh, I think that's all of it, then, uh, that section. The next section, a lot of the same sounds. So I'm carrying over the same kick drum, uh, 909 core kit, 808 kit, and a vocal sample. But I've changed up the, well, the rhythm of the beat, um, but also added some room percussion and a new bass line. So yes, slightly different beat, a bit more broken up um, room percussion, just taken from the pack, I've cleaned up the low end a bit more. Analog lab. Eight oh eight congas preset from the CZ. And then Monarch, of course. Again and again, always seem to use Monarch. Same defined square preset that we've used earlier, but with some slightly different parameters. And then they're both being run together through this analog strip um, from Ableton, adding some saturation, compression, things like that. finger up really pretty cool uh, and I think that's everything for that section okie dokie Kind of a lo-fi house vibe. Let's check everything's unfrozen. So, a little house loop from the pack. Simple top loop. It's this sort of piano texture from the pack as well. So the LFO tool here is just um, getting out of the way of the kick. And that sort of rhythm it has definitely comes from the auto pan trick we looked at earlier. So turning the um, turning the oh, let's, let's just go through it. Let's go to auto effects, auto pan, turning the phase all the way down to zero, and mount all the way up, setting your rate. So that sounds like a sixteenth saw wave. Yeah, and you get these different rhythms, especially if you combine a bunch of them. So that's that. Uh, mono synth. Uh, so here I've taken away the downbeat rather than uh, side chaining it. So we get these threes, uh, notes and sets of three that work around the kick. It's a bit cleaner than side chaining. Um, this rough mono synth, I'll uh, link on the screen where to get that from, and there'll be a link down below, either in the blog or on the YouTube um, description. One of Ableton's kicks that I'm slowly filtering down and up. Same with this garage kit, which is another Ableton kit. Pretty standard, bit of EQ, filtering down the high frequencies. And that's the rhythm. Lots of sort of skip skip notes. 
tumbling onto the kick. Like that. Nice uh, classic UK garage pattern. Uh, blank forms again. Analog confusion preset. Ran into vintage verb and LFO to create the pulse. If we take the vintage verb off. You can hear it's adding a lot of the width. And then finally granulator again. Very quietly in the background adding some texture. The file position jumping around. Bit of EQ. And then the volume automated, so it kind of fades in at the end of every section. And being sent to Vintage Verb. Another vocal sample. EQ'd little alter boy, formant shifting it down. So without that. Uh, it's adding drive. That'd be if it was formant shifted. Which is just a great way of adding texture again. And then echo. Not all the way to wet, but a lot of feedback on a ping pong. Saying 